host we have Dana who is making sure that everything runs smoothly in the background uh, we are talking about marmots today marmots are super interesting because they are actually ground squirrels and ah here we are here's some more friends and um, so yeah marmots are ground squirrels which I think is adorable hi Leaf hi Tula <laughs> so Marmots. Oh my goodness. Oh, you have a platypus. Your sparkle platypus. It is like a disco friend. So marmots we have in all the places that we live in, in, in North America, Turtle Island. Um, and there are some in Europe and other places. Uh, we're going to talk about Vancouver Island marmots because I live on Vancouver Island and I wanted to learn a little bit more about them. But right now we're just going to start off talking about marmots and how weird they are and how great they are. So there's 15 different species of marmots in the world. They live in Asia, Europe, and North America. No Antarctic marmots yet. We'll see. They are herbivores that are active during the summer. They're found in groups or colonies, and in the winter they hibernate. They are, they are the heaviest member of the squirrel family. Um, now, what was I going to say based on something? Who knows? Oh, so they hibernate. We're going to talk about what hibernation is in a little bit because it's a little bit different from even what I thought it was. And oh my gosh, field. Excellent. I love the use of purple. Um, so the one of the really neat takeaways of marmots is they sleep for 200 days of the year. It is my dream, it would be my pleasure and my privilege to be a marmot in my next life because I would love to sleep that long. That sounds wonderful. And as a herbivore myself, I think I'd be very, very good at it. Um, so there is one endemic species to Canada, which means it's it's only found in Canada, found nowhere else in the world, and that is a Vancouver Island marmot. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And here is something that's going to blow your mind, Birch and Field. Groundhogs are actually a rodent, which is a type of marmot. What? They are uh, Marmota minoques. Not saying that right. I don't speak Latin, but I, yeah, right. I had no idea. I thought there were squirrels, there were marmots, there were groundhogs. They're kind of all the same thing. Well, squirrels are squirrels, and marmots are marmots but a groundhog is just like kind of a bigger marmot but they're all pretty big um groundhogs and marmots have all kinds of like adorable names and when we look at the pictures of them later we will see that they also have adorable faces um now some people call them whistle pigs or whistlers i hadn't really heard of this but sure many people do things that i have never heard of um, have a tendency to emit short, high-pitched whistles. Sometimes we'll call them land beavers, uh, but their most famous name is woodchuck. We're going to get to that in a second. But this morning, I found out that Whistler, the like mountain community out in Canada, is called Whistler because there's so many marmots there. And when people were first, uh, when settlers were first moving to Whistler, they wanted to call it Mount London because it's like kind of snowy and rainy and foggy. And then it, there was so much whistling from so many marmots. They were like, ah, there's so many Whistlers, Whistler, Whistler, I'm going to go see Whistler. And they called it Whistler, said that like a hundred times. But so amazing. I had no idea that we named this like mountain community after an adorable little groundhog marmot friend. Now, they are also called woodchucks, which I didn't realize were also the same thing. I thought a woodchuck was different. It's not. Now, the name woodchuck, I also thought was because woodchucks chucked wood. They don't. There's no wood in the equation at all. We actually don't know 100% where it comes from, but we think that we call them woodchucks because the First Nations people of Ontario and Quebec, there's a group called the Algonquin, and they call woodchucks woodchuck. And so settlers heard woodchuck over and over again, and they were like, oh, they must be meaning woodchuck two words that we have and we will call them that. So I think it's like pretty interesting that um, 
the word for groundhog or marmot is now kind of used, oh, amazing, that is a lovely marmot, um, used all around the world. And they are, it's from our Algonquin people. Um, so that is, it's pretty neat how language goes all around the world and, um, and these animals are found everywhere. And people go, oh yeah, those little woodchucks or whistle pigs or whistlers are also found in Asia and Europe all over the places. So, all right, that is some, some uh, human history for you. Here is some natural history for you. Marmots are large rodents, which means that their teeth are always growing. They always have to be chewing on something to make sure that their teeth don't grow, 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 grow. They have to, um, just like beavers and rats, they have to uh, gnaw down their, their little teeth, their big teeth. Um, they are characteristically short, but they have robust legs. They have really large claws, which are adapted for digging. They do live in colonies in burrows. Um, and so they do a lot of digging all the time. They have stout bodies, large heads, and they eat a variety of vegetation. Like I said, they are herbivores. And so, oh, good job field. Oh my gosh, I love the use of color. This is very nice. <laughs> I've never seen a pink marmot, but I'm certainly happy I have seen one now. Um, marmots do vary in coloration, um, just like fields. So um, they're pale ones, they're darker ones. If they're found in the forest, it's normally like a darker color than the ones that are found on uh, the sides of mountains or in the alpine. Remember, if you're a predator, you're normally really good at like seeing and sensing animals. If you are prey, if you're trying to get away from a predator, then you're normally good at hiding. And so, um, uh, marmots are good at hiding. They have a lot of different color fur, so they just look like they are part of the alpine. So the total length really varies for, uh, for a marmot. It's between 42 and 72 centimeters, which is 17 to 28 inches. And the body mass is about two kilograms, four and a half pounds. Um, in the smaller species in spring, um, but then in, in autumn, they're about eight kilograms or 18 pounds. What? That is quite the difference, if you ask me. And again, I love it. Um, uh, larger species like groundhogs can get up to be 11 kilograms or 24 pounds. So like quite a variety. They're all kind of like the same shape, but uh, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So they're the largest animal that truly hibernates record scratch what about bears um is what i did when i was researching this so hibernation by definition is when animals sleep through the winter during hibernation an animal's body temperature drops uh, their breathing rate drops significantly and they survive the winter because um they are sleeping there's not a lot of food it's very cold there's no point in snorfling around in the snow looking for vegetation because it's either covered in snow or it's dead. It's advantageous to go to sleep this time because these animals can just like almost literally shut themselves off. Oh my God, excellent feet and ears, Birch. Um, so this is how they survive really harsh winters in the Alpine, in forest, in, in places that it is cold. Now, many people think that bears are hibernator, hibernators, but what they're actually doing is torpor. So remember that torpor is very similar to hibernation, but uh, Leaf, that looks so good. Um, yeah, so remember that torpor is very similar to hibernation, but hibernation is like a true deep, 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 deep sleep. And torpor is you're sleeping a lot, but you can wake up if you need to. If you hear a, if you hear a predator, if you're threatened, if something's going on, um, sometimes pregnant female bears will wake up to give birth and then they go back into torpor. Um, and so bears can sleep for like 100 days in torpor, but groundhogs sleep, or sorry, marmots, which are groundhogs, sleep for 200 days. Oh yeah, so much color. So true hibernators also drastically reduce their heart rate. And this is something we don't see in bears. So chipmunks have a heartbeat of 350 beats per minute. When they're hibernating, it's four beats a minute. 
So they're not just like sleeping, they're like shutting down. And this means that their metabolism goes down and the whole body is at super duper rest, which is so interesting, right? Um, they also have really, really salty body fluids at this time, which means that they're, um, they don't literally freeze. So their body acts like antifreeze, which is pretty cool. Um, so marmots live in the Alps, in the Pyrenees, in really high mountain areas, the Rocky Mountains, Black Hills, Cascades, Pacific Ranges, Sierra Nevada, but then they also live in plateaus in Pakistan and India. They have, uh, they prefer rolling grasslands in North America and the Eurasian steppe. They kind of live almost everywhere. Um, they're close to prairie dogs that we see in uh, in the prairies in Canada, but they're not they're they're not marmots. Uh, prairie dogs are not marmots. Um, and they're just uh, they're a little bit a little bit bigger. Marmots do oh that is the cutest marmot I've ever seen Birch. <sighs> and y'all when we see our pictures soon enough you are gonna go they're adorable. <laughs> um, so marmots typically do live in burrows. Um, there are rock piles around uh, the burrows so they can get up on the rock pile and look around and see like if there are predators, what's happening, if it's, if it's safe for everyone to come out. They do hibernate, like I said, during the winter. Now they're very, very social and they use their loud whistles. They are the, the whistle pigs to communicate with each other. So when they're alarmed, one will go up on a rock pile and whistle and the other ones will look up and say like, what, what are we whistling at? What's going on? What's happening? Do we have to go back into our burrow for safety? Um, and that is why they're called whistle pigs because they have kind of thick bottoms. Uh, they're kind of big and then they whistle to each other. So if you're in the Alpine or if you're in the forest, you hear a lot of whistling rather than chirping, it's probably a marmot. Um, they eat grasses, berries, lichens, mosses, roots, flowers vegetation, pure herbivores. Um, they do have, uh, their babies are called puppies and uh, they normally have three or four pups in a litter. And then their colonies are about 10 to 20 marmots. And so uh, once every two years, Oh, cute. See, that one is standing up on its haunches, looking around, assessing the situation, and whistling to its friends, saying like, whoa, 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 hold on. I think I see a bird or something that might want to try to eat us. Uh, they're only above ground for five months of the year. The rest of the time, they are sleeping. And I love that. I love that for them. So let's talk about Vancouver Island marmots, the marmots that I have not quite in my backyard, but quite close, actually. They are predated by eagles and mountain lions mostly, um, but the main problem that they are facing is encounters with humans when there's logging or mining or dams or things like that in the area. Um, trees get removed, and when there's no trees around, there's kind of nowhere for these marmots to hide. They do like being in the alpine. They they like being uh, above the tree line, but if animals can quickly move from where trees were to the alpine, ooh, it's like a sunset marmot. It's very nice. I love those colors. Um, uh, but so if animals are, are easy, if, if it's easier for the, the animals to navigate where trees were, then they can, oh, that is beautiful too. So many colors. I love the colors around these marmots. This is wonderful. Um, it does make it easier for, um, for these animals to eat the marmots. And so we want to have lots of protected space for these little guys to, um, to hide. Um, they, they do graze in open areas, but they're normally uh, very close to their burrow. So they can jump in the burrow and they can hide from, from whatever wants to eat them. Uh, on Vancouver Island, it is mainly cougars, mountain lions, or eagles, but throughout the world, they are hunted by other large raptors and birds. Um, cougars, in other countries, um, large cats, bears, sometimes wolves. And so they're just, you know, little, little chaps just trying to get back into their burrow. So interestingly, the Vancouver Island um, marmot is one of the most endangered mammals in Canada. In 2003, less than 30 in the wild. But then there have been a lot of people helping, a lot of 
of captive breeding and intensive conservation uh, of the areas that they live. And there's now more than 200 on Vancouver Island. Oh, with their little baby, cute. They do live in small patches on south and west facing subalpine meadows. So that means there are some trees around. It's not quite the alpine. And the reason that they live on the south and west facing is because, <clears throat> pardon me, there's avalanches that happen. These are the warmest facing um, sides of a mountain. So there's more avalanches. More avalanches mean less trees. Less trees mean there's more lichen and berries and heathers and mosses that they can eat. And those are their favorite things. They can't climb trees. And so they don't wanna eat leaves off of trees. They wanna eat the grasses that grow um, when there's not a big canopy of the trees around them. Um, so both males and females of Vancouver Island marmots, but this is kind of true for all of them, lose up to one third of their body mass when they're hibernating. So if you were to take three uh, marmots and they're all the same size, um, and you would say three of them, this is how much like one big marmot ways. In winter, take one of those marmots away, uh, them away, and that's how much they weigh now. So like one third of it is actually like quite a lot of, um, of body weight to lose. And, you know, they spend so much time in the summer just foraging. Think of sort of like a horse uh, that just like walk, 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 nibble, 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 walk, 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 nibble. They're eating a lot of grasses, which aren't really high in calories. So they have to forage all the time so they can make up all that weight when they come out of hibernation. And when they go into hibernation, they want to be nice and robust. Uh, oh my gosh. The colors are exceptional. I am really enjoying the colors today. Thank you for that. Not that, you know, browns aren't great, but I just love, I love all the colors. Um, like I said, the, when um, marmots hibernate, when anything hibernates, its heart rate gets really, really low. So uh, um, a regular marmot has a heart rate of like 110 to 200 beats a minute. When they hibernate, it goes from 200 beats down to three. So in a minute, their heart only pumps three times. It's enough to make sure that blood is moving around. It's enough to make sure that they're still alive, but it also is enough to conserve all that energy and make sure that they do live through the 200 days of sleeping that they, uh, they're going through, which is pretty cute. Um, they do a lot of nose touching. That's their greeting. So they do the cute little like their tiny little adorable noses touch each other that's how they say hi how's it going and they do a lot of play fighting as well the little babies will learn dexterity and um and play and learn how to run up on rocks and get away from predators and um and do all the things that marmots need to do by boxing and playing and it's um pretty adorable um when alarmed like i said they do give like a piercing um whistle like a whistle pig. Uh, but Vancouver Island marmots are interesting because they have five distinct whistles or trills. Oh, that is an excellent drawing. So good. So they have five different whistles or trills, which is more than any other mam mammal. Nope, that's wrong. Marmot species. Most marmots only have one whistle, and that means just like alert everyone, pay attention to me, and look where I'm looking. They whistle, everyone goes like, wait, what? Is it in the sky? Is it on the ground? What's happening? Vancouver Island marmots have five. So they can say, pay attention, look up, look over here, stop bothering your brother, and it's time for dinner, um, or something like that. Um, their burrows are quite big and extensive. They're bigger than the kingfisher burrows we learned about last um, last week, but they normally have one um, a hibernaculum is where everyone sleeps, and so they have one hibernaculum that they all cuddle together and uh, keep warm, which is pretty adorable. 
So I have one more interesting fact. Oh, a kingfisher, that was last week. <laughs> so the ancient Persian word for marmot actually means mountain ant. And the marmots there burrow in really sandy, like gold bearing soil. And it actually collects on their fur. So historians believe that people that lived in ancient Pakistan um, actually used these marmots to extract gold from the sand. So marmots would just be living their life, digging around. They have like gold dust on them. And um, these people would pick them up, uh, probably pet them very nicely, not shaking them, get the gold off of them, and then let them dig around again. So it's like this really interesting way of mining for gold using a marmot. So those are marmots. Let's show you a picture because, or a lot of pictures, because they are so cute, I cannot even. So here we are. Marmots. So this is just a lovely little marmot. So we can see it has like quite a big mouth that has those teeth in it. So they can um, they can uh, cut all the grasses and lichen and roots and stuff that they like to eat. They have quite big ears so they can hear the whistling from their pals. They have uh, nice tails that keep them warm in the winter. Now this is a Vancouver Island marmot and is this not the most kissable face you have ever seen? As a marmot, they are wild, they will not like it, but I mean, how can you not want to just give it a little, a little, little smooch? And so this is a marmot that's on the Eurasian steppe. You can see that they're quite robust. Um, and these are little babies that are um, just coming out of their den for the first time. They do live in colonies, they live in um, family colonies. And so everyone in the 10 to 20 um, individuals in a colony are all related, which is pretty cute. But again, you can see the marmots all look the same. They have like quite a nice snout, big old ears and, uh, and uh, big old claws. This marmot looks very similar to, um, you know, a groundhog, but it is living in the subalpine, just below um, the, the real alpine. Um, but I like this one because you can tell that she is one of the largest of all the squirrel family. Um, and again, I love that for her. Isn't she just so nice? And here is um, another uh, marmot. Remember, there are um, 15 different distinct marmots. And this one is another one from the Eurasian steppe. And um, it is with, uh, there's a, a baby individual and an adult obviously. Uh, but you can see like how different they get. The baby is what they would look like in the spring when they come out of their hibernaculum, when they're done hibernating. And the adult is how they get um, in the autumn when they're all plumped up and they're ready to go to sleep, which is pretty adorable. So that is marmots. Um, I know there was a lot of um, talking about the the history of like people and marmots and how we all interact um but I mean everyone has such excellent pictures we know exactly what marmots look like so uh, Birch it looks like you have a question I'm wondering what is the biggest marmot ah so the biggest marmot is actually a groundhog and so they can get up to 11 kilograms which is pretty big <laughs> yep, follow-up question. Um, I was also wondering, are gophers marmots? Mm, that's a good question. So they're not. They are of a very similar family, and in the evolutionary tree, they, um, they did kind of evolve together, and then they branched out. So, um, so they are technically marmots, but they're like cousins of marmots. They're not... Um, chunky enough to be marmots. Do they lay eggs or do they not? <laughs> Excellent question. There have been so many egg laying things recently. They have babies um, and they have three or four babies, no eggs. They come out as little furry, um, little furry babies. Um, and interestingly, so they have three or four babies every two years and for the first year the babies just stay in the uh in the den 
So they don't go outside, they don't do anything um, because they're so small and they can be, um, they can be hurt too easily. So they just hang out with their mom, which is pretty cute. I was wondering how deep do marmots dig? Mm, yep, that is an excellent question because I did not tell you that. Um, so let me find it because I definitely wrote it down. Um, they can actually be like quite large tunnels. The, the, um, so the, the whole colony has to fit in this massive, um, uh, what is the word I'm trying to say? Burrow, thank you. Um, <laughs> so in this massive burrow, the whole colony fits in it. So they are normally 30 centimeters across is like the hole to get in. So that's like a ruler. And then they are really complex. They have an escape route. They have a normal route. Um, they have a place for, for hibernation called the hibernaculum, which I think sounds like a, uh, a vampire would say hibernaculum but it's fine. Um, uh, and they also have like a birthing passage um, and a bunch of other things. And so when they have been excavated, sometimes they're about five meters in length. And what it looks like is they go in um, and then there's an escape hole and then there's a birthing um, burrow. And so they're about like five meters, but they have quite a lot of different um, areas to them. A follow-up question. I was just wondering what is there a certain species of marmot that is the biggest? Mm, yeah, so the species that is the biggest marmot is so we call them groundhogs, but the Nate like the Latin name of a groundhog is let me tell you is a marmota monax. And so even though we call it a groundhog, it is just a marmot. So, you know, like there's Vancouver Island marmots and um, Eurasian steppe marmots. And there is, um, uh, I cannot remember the name, but there's like uh, that beautiful marmot that lives in Pakistan that um, does digging up of gold. And then we have like groundhogs that we really need to call like big old marmots rather than groundhog. <laughs> What's the marmot dance? Oh, oh my gosh. You will never let me forget. Well, I think the marmot dance is very close to what Field was doing uh, because marmots, uh, they look to hide, but then they come up and they look around. So I think like this is great with the sun coming in because I look very disco tech. Um, but yeah, I think it is going down and coming up and looking around. And if you can whistle, I can't, but if you can whistle, you can like whistle around to your pals and look around, make sure everything's good and go back in your hole. So let's all get the fire dance. Chris, I'm hoping you are doing it as well because we'll all do it. Yeah, looking good, looking around. Looking around, digging your hole, going down, going up. Awesome. What a good marmot dance. <laughs> uh, now we have uh, time for one last question and let's make it from Tula. Hey, um, do they swim or not? Oh, that is a great question. So um, they can swim, but they don't normally swim. They live in areas that, um, that there is water, but there's no real reason for them to swim. So they're not close to the sea, they're not really close to big lakes. Um, and so while they they would float because they are so rotund and they can swim, um, they normally stay closer to home and they normally just like hanging out um, in, in the fields um, and the subalpine. So great question, not huge swimmers, not like the platypuses that we see, um, or kingfishers. So that is Animal Chat Time, all about marmots. I hope that you learned something today and why we call Whistler Whistler and them woodchucks and groundhogs, all these silly things. They're just nice little marmots, just living their life in a hole and then sleeping 200 days a year, living the dream. <laughs> Thanks everybody, I will see you next week.